I sang that song for more than 60 years, a song of praise to Joseph Smith, the prophet of the restoration and founder of the LDS Church, the church I served as a bishop for five years. I knew the church was true. I was a faithful Latter-day Saint. My life has been built on certain truths, but wishing doesn't change the truth. Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. When I finally learned the truth about the real history and doctrines of Mormonism, I realized that I was following the gospel of Joseph Smith and not the gospel of Jesus Christ. I have come to learn that many others have made a similar journey out of the bondage of religion and into an authentic relationship with Jesus. And that's what this show is all about. Courageous people who want to share their story, hoping that you, the viewer, will discover the same new life in Jesus. So if you're a Latter-day Saint who is struggling with questions or seeking a genuine encounter with the Savior, we invite you to join us tonight. We have a joyful message that we want to share with you. Hi, and welcome to another episode of the Ex-Mormon Files. I'm your host, Bishop Earl, and I appreciate you spending some time with us. An extra special time for, for us, our little crew of uh, Ex-Mormon Files has taken a trip to Boise, Idaho. We're really excited over the next many weeks, we're going to interview people here in Boise and have them share their stories. And uh, we're really excited to try this and uh, for, the, for them to share their stories with you. And our first guest to date is uh, Jake Miller. So appreciate you coming and sharing your story with us. Thank you. And uh, being you. our first of the Boise group. So appreciate that. Yeah. Thank you. As we do often, uh, you tell us where you were born and what your story is, kind of your background a little bit. So uh, I, was, I was born in Boise, Idaho, yeah. and uh, um, I've lived, I live now in Meridian, and I've, um, I've grown up here all my life. Yeah. Um, okay. I really love the area. Yeah. And were you born into the church, were you? So um, my, my mom was... Uh, she was inactive, and uh, my, my dad came from a Christian household, oh, really? and uh, they converted to the church. Yeah. Um, we had really good, really good neighbors who, who were bringing over cookies and, and fellowshipping my, uh, my parents. And so uh, my dad was baptized when I was about one, okay. and uh, I was later sealed. Uh, we were so all they sealed went together. through the temple and got sealed. Mm -hmm. So you don't remember any of that, I guess, um, did you? I remember they had a playroom, and it was all white, and they had a little really? train. Yeah, that, that's all I remember. That's amazing. <laughs> so you grew up then, basically. Yeah, yeah. And did, did you get baptized at age eight then? I, I did get baptized at age eight. Okay. And active then, primary in Sunday school, the whole business? Yep, I, uh, I yeah. did primary. I did, I did the whole business. Yeah. Um, I, got, uh, I was an Eagle Scout. Um, as Good a youth, you. I got four years of uh, seminary, so I graduated yeah. um, from seminary, deacons, quorum president, um, mm -hmm. teachers, priests. I served in leadership positions and stuff, very, very okay. active. And yeah. I guess your neighborhood and where you went to school, is that in those areas, are they pretty predominantly LDS? Or was it? I wouldn't say predominantly, mm -hmm. um, but... There would be at least one LDS person in every class that I had. Oh, sure. Um, yeah. Sometimes more, but, you, yeah. you know, there, there were plenty of people in my neighborhood who were LDS. Okay. So. And did your, your family, of course, was very supportive and, and encouraging, and uh, so you just uh, had a great life. You, did you have a testimony of the church at this point, do you think? Absolutely. Did Absolutely. You? I had a... I had... Um, me, me and some of my friends really liked to study into the, the deeper doctrine, it, as we'd call it, we'd call it the deep doctrine. What, what would um, that be like? So we would um, look at church, uh, history of the church, um, some of those different things, um, w weird prophecies, things that really? not everyone, like uh, people that were perfected, like the, the three Nephites who, were, who never died. Kind of wondered or, about them. Yeah, and, yeah, little things like that. Yeah, and we'd, we we'd talk to those. the 
we talked to the seminary teachers and <laughs> see what they knew or what they what the, thought. <laughs> yeah, they'd pull out their books and all sorts of books they had and <laughs> try and help try us to, out. Try to get answers. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, did you ever come up with an answer on the three Nephites? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I don't really remember it incredibly well. But did, you, yeah. did you ever hear stories about people being helped out and it was always the three Nephites that were I there? Heard that, I heard that's how the gospel got to Russia. Oh, was it? <laughs> yeah, I heard that they came with the Book of Mormon and put it on a bench and someone read it and, and, and changed the government or something. And yeah. yeah. <laughs> Amazing. Miracles. Yeah. <laughs> well, and did you, you know, the, the other one that was always in that vein was jo John the Baptist because LDS believed that he had... Um, live forever and it always mm -hmm. made me wonder why they didn't use him to with the priesthood and all that since since they had him and the three nephites as well they were apostles so they, yeah yeah why, why did the church have to be restored you know <laughs> yeah really thought that one through an eagle scout though huh that was a, mm -hmm. that was a big challenge i guess wasn't it? yep yep i actually uh, did my project when i was uh, 14 and then got my eagle when i was 18 Oh, so just uh, before the deadline. Oh uh, yeah, just before the deadline. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. But it, it it meant a lot to me, and so I'm I'm glad I still got it. Oh, but sure I was you. I was very active. Um, I loved uh, all all my friends were were in the church. Um, yeah. Family family friends. Yeah. Um, just everything was. Well, I know you're still young, but let me ask you, what did you think of Jesus at this point in your life? Uh, if you can think back a, a couple of years, what, what was Jesus? I, I really appreciated one thing that you shared with me earlier about your testimony. Maybe you could share that with, uh, with everyone. How you felt about your testimony being centered. Uh, go ahead. Um, I, I would consider myself as being a very Jesus-centered Mormon. Um, I, I saw the Book of Mormon as another testament of Jesus Christ. That was, that was a big deal to me. I saw, the, uh, I saw the apostles as special witnesses of Jesus Christ, and, and that was a huge deal to me, that that was, that was part of their calling to be yeah. a special witness of Jesus Christ in modern times. Yeah. Um, I, and that Joseph Smith was... Um, when he had his prayer and yeah, was yeah, like his I, prayer he had his answered. prayer answered by by God, and I, I just thought um, the whole restoration. I thought it was all um, all about Jesus. You know, I thought all the modern scriptures, all the prophets. I thought it was all about Jesus. And do you sense that that's a unique <laughs> perspective in in your circle of Mormon friends? Was it? Or even yeah. your family, maybe. Yeah, I mean, my my dad was kind of the same way, and my mom was a little bit. But my friends, they're like, well, "What's what's your deal with that?" And oddly enough, a lot of LDS youth this this always bothered me. I would say Jesus is God, and they'd be like, "No, he's not." <laughs> yeah, he is. <laughs> I would tell them that, and, and they just didn't even think Jesus was now, God. And, where do you think this came from for you? Just a personal. You've just had that relationship with him and mm -hmm. this whole time. I mean, my my mom always taught me when I was I was young to pray, and um, I've I've always known that since a young age I've known that God answers prayers, and yeah. I've seen I've seen prayers answered, and I've felt the love of God in my life. Even you know I, I read Unveiling Grace by uh, Lynn Wilder, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. and she describes uh, him as the dancer of grace. Mm -hmm. When she was when she was LDS, she'd see these glimpses of of feeling the love of God, of having prayers answered, different things like that, and she'd she'd call him the dancer of grace, and mm -hmm. and I think that's. That's, That's a really it. good way to describe what, what I've experienced with my life. So in, when you bring up grace, did you understand that fully as LDS? I mean, didn't you, you assumed you had to work for your salvation. And, Absolutely. And Jesus was just kind of our older brother that was probably going to help us at the end and pick us up at the end or something. But we had to do it ourselves, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. I... I remember having a couple lessons on grace, and every time we would use the word grace, I was so confused by it. Like, no matter how many times I went to true to the faith and uh, the, the definition in there of grace, I always came away like, I don't understand what grace is. And then someone told me that it's just what, when Jesus makes up for whatever we didn't do, yeah, yeah. Um, that we weren't good enough. And, you know, I just saw, I saw salvation as I have to do... Um, 
I have to do the, the best I can. Uh-huh. I have to, I have to bring all the good works that I can possibly do, as few bad works as I can possibly do, and, yeah, and Jesus will, and, yeah. and Jesus will take care of the rest. I was like, yeah. how, how beautiful is that? Yeah. And then, and then when I read the New Testament for the first time, that's, that's not what I found. And when was that? When did you read the New Testament? So I was um, preparing to serve a mission, and uh, I had a, an interview with my bishop, and um, you know, I was in high school. I had done, I had done something kind of stupid, um, okay. but I told him about it, and uh, I, I thought I repented from it. I, I had prayed about it. I had, uh, I had a change of heart. I had stopped that behavior. Um, I stopped taking sacrament before I even talked to him. Oh, um, he, he asked you to do continue. He didn't ask me to continue, but I, I had stopped um, okay. before then, and, and I told him, "I'm like, I'd like to serve a mission. I just want to tell you this, uh, so that I, so I've told you everything. Right. Um, so I have clean conscience." And he told me, "Oh well, um, you're not worthy." <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, "Okay, well, what do I need to do?" What do I need to do? Well, you know, I, I was ready to do whatever he asked me to, right. and and he told me. Um, you have to wait X amount of time. I don't remember exactly how long he told me I needed to wait, um, but he told me I'd have to wait, and then I'd be worthy. I'm like, <laughs> this passage of time is <laughs> going to make you worthy. Yeah, and I didn't understand that, so I asked him, I'm like, I don't understand how that'll how that'll change anything. And and he yeah. told me um, that I need to study the atonement. I'm like, oh, okay. Um, and at this point, I'd read the Book of Mormon um, at, at least twice. I had I was on my third time reading it, um, and I'd, I'd read the Doctrine and Covenants. It's highlighted like crazy. Yeah. I've been to Nauvoo, been to the history sites. I, I really mm-hmm. liked um, church history and studying that, and uh, I loved the Old Testament. That that was my favorite book. Really? Um, I, I, again, I also I saw everything in the Old Testament as a type of Christ. Um, all the different stories in there um, in some way related to to Jesus. Like when I'm reading uh, Jonah, yeah. um, how he was swallowed in the, you know, he, the, he was swallowed in the belly of the days. water for three days. Yeah. And, um, and you picture I, I, that symbolism. Yeah, yeah. I just, I just saw that as, as Jesus. That's fantastic. You know, different yeah. attributes of Jesus described all throughout the Old Testament. But I had never read the New Testament. So when, when he told me to... To study, study the atonement, atonement, I'm like, okay, well, I should probably read the New Testament then. Yeah. Um, and so I stopped reading the Book of Mormon and switched because I like to I like to focus on it. Yeah. Um, and so I started reading, and pretty soon into it, um, I started to see some things that kind of made me question question the church. And and this doesn't really, you know, most of the stories I've heard of people who've left the church, I've never really heard anyone bring this up, but um, John the Baptist uh, being Elias, as it says in the King James, right. Elias is the same as Elijah. I, I, had, I already, knew the, um, already knew the study of the word. Um, I, I knew that it was the same, but um, I was reading it, and then Joseph Smith said something about how Elias is a title, and Elijah was, was the specific prophet. And he was going to come again. Mm-hmm. The Bible says that, yeah. Yeah, yeah. and then Matthew... So you fulfilled, that was fulfilled with... John the Baptist. Yeah, Matthew yeah. eleven. Um, I forget. I forget the verse, but um, in Matthew eleven, Jesus says, "If if you believe, then this is Elijah, which is for to come." Yeah. And and you know, I was like, so so if the Malachi prophecy, which was that Elijah would come, right, right. was fulfilled in Christ's day, then it wasn't fulfilled in eighteen thirty. Didn't need with, to with Joseph Smith. So what does that mean for the restoration? What does that mean for? Uh, for what goes on in the temple, what does that mean for genealogy? And and that was the first thing that made me start to question. Um, wow. That was the first thing that kind of was like, hmm, I wonder if I'll find other things in here that aren't quite the same as what what I know. And so uh, I got to Romans. Romans was a huge, huge book for me because um, yeah. it talked about salvation. Um, Coming through through faith in Jesus Christ, and Jesus and Christ Jesus yeah. is enough. Yeah. Um, that was the one thing I learned that Jesus is enough. That I can't work for my salvation. That grace is a gift from God. Well, I can't tell you how impressed I am with you to to come to that conclusion. You weren't being guided by anybody with this information. I mean, it, 
that had to be kind of knocked into my head to, to even come to understand what Jesus did. When I left the church, it was all about the bad news, all the mm. negative things that, that we were aware of. The but church I didn't know I didn't aspects. know Jesus. And you had this heart for Jesus this whole time. Now, you had an opportunity to meet with the general authority. So yes. And an institute teacher. And you had some interesting <laughs> comments from them. You shared this. Go ahead and tell us a little bit about that. So um, once, once I started to have all these, these questions I, and things, I just wrote them all down in a journal, um, all these different references, trying to understand them, put them on paper. I'm visual and wanted to, wanted yeah. to get them. And I first brought them up to my dad, and he didn't really like like it. Um, he, he wasn't very receptive. Did he, had he heard of some of the stuff you were asking about? Um, I don't think so. He's, he loves the New Testament, so I thought it was weird that he was, I guess he just didn't really... He had a, he had a yeah. Christian background. He did. It was a little, maybe he hadn't been, well, anyway, go, but, so yeah. go ahead. So, um, a little, little off track, but come into, uh, shortly after that conversation, I got a phone call from my stake president, who doesn't know me very well. It was just out of the blue, saying that um, Elder Dirk Driscoll in Area 70 was coming for a state conference. Mm -hmm. And so he, he said uh, that he's going to meet with some, some people in the area. And so uh, said, can we come over to your house and you'll have 30 minutes to ask whatever questions you want. I'm like, oh. A this bunch of you or just you? Just me, just wow. to my house. And okay. I'm like, oh, this is going to be awesome. What am I going to ask him? Because now I have all these questions. Yeah. <laughs> and so I was like, ah, oh, trying to figure out what I was going to ask. Um, at this point, I had started to study into some different church history things, which I already knew about most of the, most of the church history things that people right. would leave the church for. But right. I'd studied into them some more. But, but what I ended up doing is just reading um, from Ephesians 2. To, to the to general authority. To him. And, and reading um, different parts of Romans um, from various chapters. So you went right to the New Testament. Huh? <laughs> right to the New Testament. And I just read to him and I said, so understanding this, um, how do, you know, I, I laid this out and said, so what does this mean for salvation? How are we saved? Yeah. And, and that's, that's what I wanted to ask him. I wanted to, I was yeah. just genu genuinely <laughs> curious curious on how he would answer and and the thing he told me is that we can't trust the new testament um that it's been altered and changed and there's just so many translations that we don't know that any of them are right and he told me that i need to um that i can trust the trust the book of mormon because it's never been yeah. never been changed <laughs> I've been to Nauvoo, and they were selling 1830 editions, and I flipped so through you, one. you and knew that there were changes. Yeah. I, I knew that there had been changes, and um, it, was, it was interesting to meet with them. I was, I was a little frustrated after that conversation, but then I started meeting with missionaries, and they, they were giving me the same answers. I'm like, I believe in, I've always been told that we believe in the New Testament. Like, now you're telling me we don't? Yeah. And uh, so I was in an institute class. Um, about world religions, and my professor, um, I don't know if it's a professor, my teacher yeah. um, was, was he saved Christianity for the end. This was pretty recent. Um, so when we were getting into Christianity, he was saying how Baptists are crazy, and they believe that <laughs> they just have to confess Jesus Christ, and then they're, they're good, and that's creedal, that's not biblical, there's no reason for them to believe it based on the Bible. Yeah. And I just rose my hand and said, Romans 10, 9. <laughs> and, and he's like, oh, what's that mean? And, you know, I, I quoted it to him, and, and he, uh, he's, he's been in the church education for 30 years. Mm. He's taught New Testament every year. Yeah. For 30 years, he's been a mission president for, I think, for five years. I'm not oh sure if goodness. there's... Yeah. He was a mission president, I think, Mexico. Um, yeah. I mean, this is a guy who, who should know his should stuff. Know. And that he was misrepresenting the Bible to the class was just kind of bothering to me. And so I just, I just said Romans 10.9, and, and he, was, he was very vehement at Do that you point. tell us all what that is? Um, if you, uh, it's where Paul is speaking. He's, he's speaking to the, the people in Rome about, um, he wants them to be saved. And he tells them that uh, when you confess Jesus Christ as your Lord 
and as your Savior and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, then you then will, you will be, be saved. saved. Yeah. And he goes on to say that the confession is, is what, you know, believing in your heart is what makes you righteous before right. God. Yeah. And confessing before mankind is what saves. He that believeth in me hath everlasting life. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And, and I shared that with him and he, he just didn't. <laughs> what did he say about Paul? Um, so he pulled me That's aside so after, after the class and he was like, where did this all come from? And I told him I'd been reading the New Testament and uh, I told him I had all these questions. And so I shared, shared a couple more verses um, with him of things that I've, I've been learning um, from Ephesians and Romans mainly. Right. And uh, he told me that uh, Paul is an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just had this smile when you wrote that. I, I just, that was so funny. He told me Paul is an idiot, and he told me that I should stop wasting my time in the Bible. He told me we can't trust the can't trust the New Testament, and then was turning around trying to use the New Testament to to argue against things that I hadn't even said. Yeah. Uh, he, he kind of um, pushed upon me some like specific Calvinistic. He's, he's I guess dealt with a lot of Baptists. Oh. Um, he was pushing upon me a lot of Calvinistic views that I don't necessarily have. Yeah. I, I just, I'm just reading the New Testament. I don't have, I'm not really a denomination or anything right, right now. Um, but he's, he's setting up all these different arguments and then beating them for me that I haven't even, and uh, telling me that I need to stop wasting my time in the Bible, telling me Paul's an idiot. And Well, have you known... It sounds like you've talked to a lot of people, and what do you sense that they, they really don't understand? They don't know, right? They haven't really spent that much time in the Bible, right? Mm -hmm. So what, uh, what do you think that, what is the problem? I mean, we study the New Testament once every four years, heaven's sake. Yeah. So what is it we're missing, or what does the LDS miss? Um, I think the general distrust of the New Testament is... Um, that's a big, big hurdle, that's a, isn't that's it? That's a big the, hurdle. The eighth and, article of faith. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, you know, I've heard both sides, people saying, oh, but we absolutely believe in it. It's just not always accurate. And then I've heard people saying that um, basically whenever someone brings up a verse that would contradict LDS doctrine, yeah, right. they would say, oh, well, we can't trust the Bible. Yeah, it's, the, it's wrong. The plain and precious things have been taken out. Yeah, they would just pick and choose. They, they were doing right. some, some cherry picking. And I think that is really dangerous for, for people that start to doubt the church and leave the church. So many people who, who do that don't have anything to, to go on anymore. They, they just become atheists. Uh, I think part of that, I think, is an excellent answer because... Uh, We've talked, been talking about this as kind of as a group, and and the fact that they're not anchored in Jesus, so when they leave Mormonism and they find out the only true church isn't true, they they're not anchored. And I've said if Methodists were to go to become Presbyterians or Baptists back to Methodists or something, they still have Jesus. Yeah, they to still take have with Jesus. Them. Yeah, so they're just. I mean, they may change the format a little of their of their worship on Sunday or something, but it's they still have Jesus. Yeah. But uh, Mormons, they don't have that. They don't trust the Bible. They don't trust. I, I they mean, don't. They don't look to the cross. They they're afraid of Christian churches because they're mm -hmm. abominable mm -hmm. or something. Anti anti Mormon lies. Yeah, and so it makes it very difficult for them to to transition. So how have you been doing? How was your first visit to a Christian church? What was that like? So um, my, my first visit was uh, before I had um, any of these, these concerns or before I was getting ready for my mission. Really? Um, it was while I was in high school uh, with my now ex-girlfriend. And uh, she, we, we were going to do a little trade um, where you I go was... go to mine and I'll go to yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. Sort of a flirt to convert sort yeah. of a deal. <laughs> um, <laughs> And she invited me to her church, and I didn't really know entirely what to expect. I'd been to Christian concerts, yeah. um, and that's what it felt like to me. Um, the music, you mean? And yeah, I, I went there, and they, they had a rock band, and they were playing some Christian, Christian rock songs, worship, and yeah. everyone standing up with their hands. I'm like, this is not my church. <laughs> <laughs> it's a little different, isn't it? It was, it was yeah. really different. Um, Did you sense that they were sincere though in being there mm. and that they had a worship for Jesus. Or, mm. yeah. mm -hmm. I remember when I walked in the doors, um, I think 
four people shook my hand and and everyone wanted to they, they have everyone wear name tags and so everyone oh, yeah. knew my name and they're oh. I've never seen you before and I, I was you know I didn't expect them to be so kind yeah. and, and to be so fellowshipping. Who would, who would have guessed? Huh? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and they actually love their children and they have, love yeah. their families. And <laughs> that the Christian uh, Christian life is actually a, a very sincere one, and you know, yeah, that's amazing. And and worship Jesus. I mean, the, mm. the words are all about Jesus. The music and everything. Everything. Yeah, everything. They didn't tell me that I need to work be more faithful with my home teaching. Right. They didn't tell me I need to do more genealogy. Right. <laughs> That's amazing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So where, what are you doing now? Are you, uh, you attending a church? I was, you actually say indicate that you go back to the LDS church once in a while. Is that with your family? Yep, yep. So mm -hmm. um, I'm, I'm still living with, uh, with my family. Okay. Um, Has this well, been hard on them? Um, Have you been able to share? And I have, and um, it's been it's been it's been kind of hard. But I really like in Matthew where where Jesus Christ says, "Think not that I came to bring peace, but a sword that shall divide." Um, he goes on to say, yeah. "Mothers yeah. and daughters," and and talks about all this division. And you with, felt that, and, and and the overall sense is he that um, he that isn't willing to give up whatever yeah. to follow me isn't worthy of me. Yeah. Um, it's a tough pill to swallow. It, but, it is. But, but I've seen it in my family too. It's been very, but very, very, very important. Very yeah. important. that. But have you sensed that yeah. joy? I mean, you, you've had that relationship somewhat with Jesus, but has it been magnified now that you kind of have the burden of, of or the bondage, I guess, of, of the LDS off? Yeah. Been better? Yeah. Um, I feel a lot less judgmental where I, I used to look at people drinking coffee and kind of shake my finger at them and yeah. saw them all as, as horrible sinners and didn't didn't see myself as a sinner for some reason yeah. um, even though I was well, we have and, a certain pride when we're keeping the commandments and the others aren't you know mm -hmm. and, and mm -hmm. we're judging and well Jake we're just about out of time anything you want to say to your family friends or um I've got 30 seconds or so the the biggest thing I would say is read the read the New Testament um, with the eyes of a child. With the eyes of a child, it? Michael yeah. Wilder. Yeah. Um, Michael Wilder said, the pastor who talked to him said, read it um, as if as if you've never read it before. Yeah, and see if you can't see what it is that, that learn the, what there what is the to gospel learn. is, what they actually preached. Yeah. Well, Jake, thanks so much for coming, and I Thank appreciate you. your sincerity, your enthusiasm. I can tell that uh, I'm, I'm grateful that Bishop had that counsel to you, because <laughs> we've, we've got you on the right team at this point. So thanks for joining us. We'll see you.